Good afternoon everyone, I'm Andy Bird from Anglian Water. I'm the lead asset planner for water recycling infrastructure. Um, over the last two years I've been looking at how we look at suds opportunities across the Anglian Water region for retrofit. I've been quite ambitious with how many slides I want to try to cover off uh, uh, this afternoon because it's one opportunity to talk to, to yourself. So. Hopefully in 20 minutes I will give you a quick overview of Anglian Water, why we need to, to challenge and change and adopt SUDS practices, the innovation that we're currently looking at, uh, and then really start talking about the long-term SUDS water management plan that we've developed over the last couple of years. And then just at the end, just really try to tie it back into why 2019 will be a big year for Anglian. So, just some facts and figures uh, of Anglian Water. I'm not going to read them all out, but um, for those that don't know, we have the largest water and water recycling company in England, uh, in geographic area. We have the lowest lying area in England, uh, so we're vulnerable to sea level rise. Water resources are already scarce, with 59 of our 129 river catchments over abstracted or over licensed. We have over 1,100 water recycling centres. 77,000 kilometres of pipes and 6,000 pumping stations within those catchments. So when we start looking at how removing surface water can benefit the England water, we, we can start looking at 6,000 pump stations, water recycling centres, and it's about removing that water, which rainwater, pumping, treating rainwater is probably unnecessary. So we can see big benefits in just removing surface water. So it's not just about flood risk, it can be energy and reduction of our carbon footprint. So what are the challenges we face? So it's, it's not just as Anglin, uh, all water companies uh, face similar ch challenges uh, and, and I guess in fact uh, around the globe. So climate change, we already touched on that, uh, is going to be a big impact uh, for our region. It's already dry at the moment, uh, sea level rise will have the impact. Population. Um, Anglian Water currently has three of the fastest growing cities in the UK. Um, so population growth over the next 25 years is going to be a big impact to our water infrastructure. We also need to protect the environment, but also be affordable to our customers and also start planning for the longer term future. So in response to those challenges we face, we've set out four long term uh, ambitions in our SDS statement, a document that will inform planning and business operations well into the future. Um, so, we need to be resilient to the risks of drought and flooding, sustainable economic and enable housing growth, uh, and we need to be carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, and we also really need to show some significant improvements to the ecology quality within our region. So as I touched on, growth is one of the biggest impacts to our region. So in Ant 7, we're potentially going to see 200,000 new properties built. So we need to be able to service those. So one of the potential ways we can start enabling growth is removal of surface water to, to free up that headroom within that capacity of our pipes. BWMPs will be coming by 2021. We already have produced our water recycling long-term program, so that details how and the, the amount of money we need to be spending to deliver all that growth plan within our region. So 429,000 people in the M7 and over a million people coming into the region in, by 25 years. So we really need to change and innovate to, to be able to manage those needs. So how does Anglium uh, look to bring innovation within to our business. So, quick show of hands, has anyone heard of the Anglian Water Shop window? Oh, that's quite a good response. Yeah. Fantastic. So, shop window was really formed really to, to allow us to have one catchment where we can start building that catchment to what a catchment could look like in 25 years. So it's for water and wastewater. So, we allow any um, company to come in there if they've got a great idea of what innovation could be that's the, the playground so it's new market um, close to where I live um, so even within new market we've uh, really pushed some sort of large goals there to 
to really push the boundaries of what we need to do. So we've got 80 litres per day on water consumption, carbon neutral, 100% customer satisfaction, zero pollutions and flooding. But having that, it really sort of drives through innovation. So the strength of the innovation shop window is the sheer number of partners engaged in a number of projects running simultaneously. These projects are designed to solve the most challenging questions the water industry face. We have the water innovation networks that allows us to engage with different partners out there. So we already have over a, a thousand businesses involved in the wind project. But it's not all about new products, innovation. Suds, so we're all aware, requires a big engagement plan. So the shop window, we do have a shop in Newmarket High Street. It's a different way how we can engage with our community and our customers. So it's a, a drop-in where they can come, we can sell the message. With our engagement plans, we make our customers the sort of stars so people can connect with it. The adverts on the bus stops, we have the rain paint so people can really touch and feel what's going on without that community and being part of it. So again, with subsport management, we have the SUDS model that we take out to, to the teams there. So we've seen a real big intake in uh, people's awareness of what we're doing in that, that catchment. So on a property level engagement project, where we, we asked the, the online community, which are part of modeling in Newmarket, uh, within 12 minutes we had complete sign up of uh, offering uh, water devices at that property level. So it's from rainwater reharvesting to uh, water tanks to save water. So having that, that engagement within the community can respond very quickly to, to the needs. Just want to touch on how we're preparing ourselves to deliver SUDS in AMP7. Uh, so one of the projects I'm involved in um, is creating a catchment model for every single model catchment we have across our region. So it's 1124 models which are currently being built. That will enable us to, to be ready to understand the risks that we, we face in those, those catchments, develop the, the solution or start showing how SUDS can benefit that. So all those models are there to be shared and help other flood risk partners understand flooding within those catchments. So they, they all come with 2D mesh um, to allow us to really understand rainfall uh, impacts within those catchments. So they're being delivered really to get us fit for, for AMP7 delivery. Having those models for every catchment, we can then start utilising real-time modelling. So we, we currently have projects that are looking at ICM Live, so New Market being a catchment which is running real-time data to understand the impacts of rainfall coming across that catchment. It can then trigger warnings to that community. Uh, we can then send uh, our own operational teams out there. But it, it's a way to start moving from those sort of dumb catchments to intelligent networks so we can start uh, improving not just from capital intervention but just being able to monitor and improve networks. So that's just showing the, the, the rainfall uh, across the entire AW region and then when we can see there's a, a rainfall event within one of those zones that um, impacts one of our catchments, we will then start running that model to, to really understand the detailed impacts. But in order to build our understanding capacity for improved surface water management, we have used the program developed by Atkins uh, called Sud Studio to uh, assess every one of our water recycling catchments for the opportunity to deliver suds. Um, this work is focused on catchment scale to enable us to, to consider root cause properly. This is a shift from just dealing with uh, suds at the locations of the, the flooding. So uh, on the screen here you can start seeing some of the, the feed maps that the, the tool produces. You can start seeing the percentage of uh, surface water removed at that catchment, hot spots, the number of feasible options that you can deliver within those catchments and the cost per cubic metre removed from that, that catchment right down to the, the detail level of the different types of such components which can be uh, delivered within there. I love we've developed that tool, it's there to be shared with all our flood risk partners. Um, it's that discussion piece, what would you want to try to deliver within that catchment, so it's not for us just to hold, uh, we want to share with that with our flood risk partners. Uh, another tool to, to really start drilling down on where we would want to deliver an AMP7, um, We've produced a tool which allows us to understand where the targeted areas uh, will benefit the, the, the most from subsequent water removal. Uh, 
that's a GIS tool. We can apply all the drivers within that catchment. So where we have DT5 flooding locations, where we have upstream growth, where we have CSOs, we can attach that to every single pipe. We can then start to assess how much surface water removal can be um, removed from that area and the impact that can have on that, that specific driver. We can add in external drivers as well. So where we've got uh, LFFA flood risk locations, we can add that into the tool. So it's just a, a way that we can really start to hone in on where we're going to get the biggest benefits for surface water removal. But we've also been doing quite a lot with just community feedback, just asking those questions, would you want to see a water back at the front of your property? Uh, and I don't know if you can read some of those, but not all of them are positive. But they're the sort of things we, we need to really start taking into account when we start to deliver these out in big numbers. So when you see the sort of numbers we're talking about, uh, one million of these to be installed over the next 25 years, we need, really need to understand what's going to drive the community to, to have those installed at their properties. More from potentially PR19, from customer feedback on delivering suds. But I think the comment down there is, is quite relevant that we sometimes use terminology that people are not familiar with. So fire retention areas, I'm sure I can get a pill for that. Really just needs to, to really, when we start going out to, to communities, that we, we just sell the right message and put it in language that they can really understand. Some of the studs work we've delivered in the shop window. I have a video for the school project later on, if, if I get through to the end in time. But because we're, we're focused on property level tanks, water butts, um, in part of our long term plan as well, we started to look at do you just install a slow re release water butt or can you start installing real time controlled smart systems which we can empty in line with the ISM live when we know we've got rainfall coming. But it can also be spun on to, to really help with drive where your water sc scarce areas are as well. This system is a, a framework really hard tank which has been installed for the property and it services the upstairs WC and the washing machine. So just over that, that um, window, um, I think it was a couple of weeks there too, uh, the actual property saved 860 litres of rainwater was supplied to those two areas. So the average daily demand reduction on the actual water supply system was 95 litres, so again in the, the, the shop window where we want 80 litres ahead per day, installing a real smart control system can really drive that down. Over that same period there was no discharge back out to the, the drainage network as well. But there, there is a compromise, that type of install doesn't come cheap for a one-off property, so um, we are looking at sort of green water where you do it mainly on new housing developments because you can scale that up. But if you have a really scarce uh, water supply need, that could be the start of the technology you would, you would start to look at to install. But what I've talked about at the moment, we're delivered on properties, customers which are already engaged. So I've challenged the team, give me 100% take up for suds retrofit at each of those properties along this, that terrace street. So it's a typical terrace street. Front doors straight onto the pavement, down pipes straight onto the pavement into the road system, drainage systems at the back, wheelie bins down the street. How do you get 100% take up on a catchment like that? They're more typical of the, the catchments that we, we deal with in our urban city. So it's, it's nice to deliver suds in easy uh, areas. So over the next 12 months, that's the challenge I've put out the team, which we're currently looking at. But we're going to monitor each side. One side will be smart suds, the, the other side will be potentially done to really start comparing do you get those additional benefits, the, the additional cost on one side of the, the, the street there. So our long term plan really, um, you may have seen it on, all, all, on the headers anyway, Make Rain Happy is our branding. Um, it's at the centre of everything we're going to do for surface water management going forward. The campaign is really customer facing, engaging and unique and deliberately sort of aimed at the younger generation. Um, not only with the younger audience, customers of the future, so in 25 years, hopefully they will expect suds so as a matter of course. But pester power, so if we think of seat belts and uh, recycling, 
we can really drive at the heart of children within those communities. Hopefully we can help the pester pile move up the, the window. So, so what is our 25 year long term self support management plan? This is a, I guess, draft infographic, um, which needs some, some amendments. I don't quite like the, the sort of pipes being delivered uh, for the schools. But the sort of numbers we're, we're, we're looking at, uh, we want to remove 1 million downpipes at residential and commercial properties across the region. Collaborating with our partners, customers, we want to plant 1 million trees, shrubs and hedging plants across our region. We want to deliver suds for schools at every single school across the Anglian Water region. Educate 500,000 school children using the Make Rain Happy campaign. But we also recognise we have targeted areas, so we've also included the five million pound funding available for other communities outside our targeted areas. If they have a, a great idea or want to adopt a green space, how can we support them as well? So again, very much the, the same. So um, partnership working. Partnership working over this last AMP has been very successful, so again, we're not going to be able to deliver all this by ourselves. So partnership working with all our flood risk partners, communities, is key to this. And even our partnership funding within AMP 7, we have increased over the previous AMP, because we recognise it, it's a great way for working collaboratively with other partners. So, quickly just tying it back to um, why AMP 7... Well, not uh, 2019 is going to be big year for studs for Anglian Water. So the off what determination comes out at the end, 7 2019. They're already just given the initial feedback to ourselves. Um, I think the, the term is we potentially just may need to sharpen the pencil slightly to, to make some adjustments. So by the end of 2019, this is where we really find out with our sustainable drainage plans, long term plan there to deliver suds across all our catchments, if that will get the off what backing to, to allow us to fund that programme of work. We're now moving into that transition window. We don't want to get to year one of AMP 7 and then start thinking how we're going to deliver this. We're, we're now having workshops to think how, where and who's going to deliver all this sets for us. This is a big jump for us. We've seen lots of exemplar suds delivery across different water companies, different LFFAs. The work we're pushing in for AMP 7 is a big, big step change for, for ourselves, so we need to really understand how we will deliver that. So from, um, from April this year, we will be moving into the new process of delivery for, for AMP 7. So we have workshops at the moment to, to really understand how we will deliver where and how we need to communicate that out to our customers. Quick thanks to people who have been involved. I've not done this all myself, so Atkins, OK Water and Dundella. To, to finish up in conclusion, really on our AMP7 business plan, so in AMP7, um, over the next five years, we have put through the submission to Offwatt that we intend to invest 6.5 billion over the five years, our biggest ever investment, 30% higher than the current AMP. This includes 630 million to make the region resilient to risks of drought and flooding, eight times more than the current AMP. 783 million to support a flourishing environment, 650 million to enable sustainable growth, 470 million of that is on water recycling projects, and 90 million for enhanced resilience for our water recycling network. Thank you very much. <laughs>